In this demo, we will mainly focus on the important recent additions to the Attack Analytics system. As a reminder, Attack Analytics is a machine learning and domain expertise based system which smartly clusters a huge amount of events into a manageable number of incidents. For example, we can see that in the last 30 days, we clustered about 3 million events into around 3,000 incidents, further classifying them automatically by severity to critical, major, and minor, leaving you with about 120 critical events that probably require your immediate attention. A huge area of investment we had in this past year was integrating attack analytics with multiple sensors. So basically today, attack analytics is integrated in analyzing events and information from all Imperva sensors, giving you better visibility into your network to understand what happens in incidents from all types. Another example is the indication of a volumetric DDoS attack here, which many times is masking application layer attacks, as indicated here. And when you click on it, you can go to the area around the time of the attack you can find this attack in the list and see what happened around it. Here, you can see the volumetric DDoS attack. And around it, we can see a lot of attacks taking place. All of them are fully blocked, which should fill you with confidence. You can even see the network level information of the volumetric DDoS attack itself on the right there. For example, you can see the attack it was about 73 gigabytes per second which is a nice one. You can even go directly to the network traffic dashboard and further investigate the attack. Going back to the dashboard, I'll now describe the very important recent additions that have been added lately, one of which we call actionable insights. This is basically a system that analyzes your attack patterns and your configurations, finding potential issues and recommending optimizations that will help you better secure your system. If you click on it, we can see that in this case, we have two insights. One of them is a whitelist vulnerability found which means an IP within your whitelist range is attacking other customers and has the ability to attack you as well, but you just don't know it and therefore we'd recommend you to consider excluding it from that IP list. Many customers will tend to mitigate a risk by IP and then forget or not maintain the ACLs correctly. And this is getting extremely dangerous when the IP is trying to attack you. Going into the details, you can see the IP and the ranges. You can actually click the IP and go directly to our reputational intelligence service, which is another recent addition to our portfolio. And this intelligence is actually based on Imperva's cloud community and our in-house threat research labs, giving you a calculated risk score for each IP as it goes through the system. This score that is based on the attacks it performed and how many customers it attacked, the tools that were used and what it's known for. There's also some additional information like the ASN in this case, Amazon AES, the number of requests in the last two weeks, where it attacked from, and two, the attack patterns over time. Now remember, this is against all Imperva customers and not just you. Violations, client applications associated with this IP, the target industry it's attacked, etc. So basically, we're giving you more information to get a more educated and informed decision so you can feel confident you know what to do with it. And if you decided, you can go directly to the right setting page in the cloud system and resolve the issue immediately. You can go and edit the whitelist here. Going back to the second insight now, this is a bad reputation IP inside, which is associated with reputation intelligence that I just showed you as well, which means in the last 24 hours, an IP which has a high risk score attacked you. In this case, two incidents. So you should consider blacklisting this IP for three days. By the way, the three days comes exactly from the reason of not maintaining the ACL list usually. This is why we put a duration on this blacklist recommendation. You can see here, even the rules that you can put in your ruling system. So this is a very important addition. Let me go back to the, let's say 90 days view and go down to the highlight section. And the highlight section is an area you're already familiar with, but we added a new feature to it too, which was required by many customers. It's all the incidents associated with the known CVEs, the common vulnerabilities and exploits. Our customers wanted to identify these CVEs used by the attackers and see how the system handles them. So if you go inside, you can see all of these that it will associate with CVEs. And you can see that everything was blocked, which is a good thing. And you can also see the number of CVEs. 
I can also click in and then go to review and see the official information about the CVE. Going back again to the dashboard, I would like to show another filter, which is very useful in the day-to-day -day activity of a security analyst. So I can filter now. The incidents based on, first of all, not fully blocked. Instead, those events in alert mode. Let's return to the last 24 hours because it's a day-to-day -day routine. I can see that in the last 24 hours, we had two critical incidents that were only alerted and not blocked. It is suspicious enough though for me to keep analyzing it. I can go to the incidents page, see some of the attack details, including the very readable narrative of the attack. Using cross-site scripting and illegal resources access by a single IP from Ireland by using curl hacking tool. So more information here. Again, an IP which can lead you to reputation intelligence. And this definitely warrants more investigation. So we go to the details. Before I investigate, I can go to the collaboration tool and say that I'm handling this and even give you the ticket number in the ticketing system. Okay, back to the attack. I can see now that the attack originated from the cloud WAF, as well as all the information we saw on the other screens. We can see which attacks happened and which are more dominant or less. URLs attacked, host IP, the attacking IP, and information from reputational intelligence, user agents, client application, pattern over time, and even sample events, including the information of the events. I can click into those events and see the information. I can decode the payload and see the actual attack of putting a URL inside a parameter. In this case, this gives me enough information to understand that this is not a good behavior. The alert mode is probably a mistake, so I can go from here, again, directly to the correct setting page in the CloudWAF page. And then I can see that, indeed, everything is in alert. I can change to block whatever I want. I can save it and I can resolve this issue within minutes from the second I found it. I can go back to the attack analytics system. Once I finish, I acknowledge that I finished so nobody else will need to go inside and check it. Going back to the dashboard just before I end, one small thing that's important to know. Each user can edit the layout of this dashboard to format what's most important to them.